This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to focus in on a very common task that editors need to do inside of their timelines, and that's screen replacements. And in this lesson, I want to show you how you're going to be able to use the power of Boris Continuum Complete and Mocha Pixel Chooser to do some very powerful compositing techniques right inside of your Avid Media Composer timeline. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once we are in Media Composer, you'll see that I have my screen that we're going to replace set up along with the shot that we're going to be putting into that screen. There we go. Now keep in mind that right now this is a green element that's in there, but this could really be anything. This could be a different video, it could be, you know, whatever happened to be there on the shoot day that we just realized it needs to be replaced. Now something I also want to mention before we go on, and the original post about the screen replacement that I saw in the Avid Editors of Facebook was talking about screen replacement in relation to uh, Mocha inside of Sapphire 11. What's important to keep in mind about the main difference between Sapphire and BCC is BCC is a, you know, not only an effects toolkit, but, but just that. It's a toolkit of tools that you can use to fix common problems, whereas Sapphire is more focused specifically on visual effects, glows, lightning bolts, you know, glints and that type of thing. But it does also have some important tools, so don't forget that, like the S effect or the builder tool, as well as the lens flare builder tool. But in the case of this tutorial, we're sticking with BCC 11 and we're gonna use the pixel chooser really is the workhorse for this tutorial to do all the work that we need to do. So let's go into the effects palette here and I'm just gonna come up to the search dialog box and I'm gonna type in BCC pixel chooser. We'll grab the pixel chooser effect. I'm gonna take it and drag it and drop it down onto our shot. The whole screen turns gray, but don't worry about that. We'll fix all of that in just a second. Now, because we are going to be working inside of Mocha, I do wanna point out that you wanna make sure that you have your timeline set to be the best quality right down here at the bottom of the timeline window. If you don't, Mocha will prompt you to do that. So I normally just get in the habit of making sure that that's set before I get rolling. Now, I do also wanna give a big shout out to Artbeats and thank them for the use of this footage in this lesson. And you can check out this clip plus thousands of others at artbeats.com. All right, let's head on over to the effects editor and I'm gonna come down to launch Mocha. Now, once Mocha launches, you'll see here's our shot. And let's come right back to the beginning. Now I could use the Bezier spline tool or the Bezier layer tool, but I'm just going to stick with the X spline tool here and I'm going to select it. I'm going to use the Z or the Z key for all my American friends to zoom in on the area of the screen that I'd like to see closer up. I'm going to use the X key on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to pan the Mocha window so that I can see centered up the area that I want to see. And let's worry about our track right now. And I'm just going to be a little bit liberal with this and I can actually zoom back. For right now, let's just pick sort of this area right about here. I think that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna select everything. We're just going to tighten up the corners on that. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna set the minimum percentage of pixels used to be somewhere around 50%. I'll leave the motion set to translation, scale, rotation, and shear. And all I'm gonna do now is simply hit track. And if I happen to be somewhere else in the timeline, I could track forward and track back, but we are at the beginning of the timeline, so I'll just track forward. And I'm gonna speed this up just for the purposes of you not having to sit through the entire track. And once it's done, we're going to turn on our planner surface here, and I'm just gonna set the surface to be probably about the halfway point at the edge of the screen here, just because I always like to do this, just in case the track is off a little bit. I don't have to monkey around too much with the track 
because I'm going to have this sort of liberal area that we're going to be doing the corner pin in. Now, don't worry about what's happening with the screen. We're going to get in and worry about that in just a second. What I'm now going to do is just turn on the grid here. So if I zoom back, you'll see if I just grab the time bar that that track is doing pretty much exactly what I need it to do. Okay. Now, we're going to need this tracking information. I'm just going to turn off my planar surface. I'll turn off the grid here. So what we are going to want to do is to export this tracking information before we move on. Now, I've actually already saved it out, but the process to save it out is fairly straightforward. We're going to come to Export Tracking Data. We're going to save this as Corner Pin Data. I'll just say Save. You'll see I've already got it saved on the desktop called, appropriately enough, BCC Corner Pin Tracking Data. I'm just going to cancel out of that. We'll say Cancel. And let's now go to the next step, which is going to be the actual removal of that green screen. We've done the track for the footage that's going to go behind it. What we now like to do is to piggyback on that tracking information with the roto that we have to do to remove the screen. So let's do that. Now you'll see that I actually wasn't on the first frame when I started to do my track, which is fine because I did mention that I can track backwards. So let's just do that for that one frame. Perfect. There we go. And let's start right here. And again, we're going to go back to that X-Spline tool. I'm just going to zoom in now because I do need to zoom in. There we go. And let's just draw the screen that we're going to want to cut out, the area of that screen that we're going to want to cut out. Now, what I should do here is I should add a point in the middle just to give me flexibility if there's a little bit of a warp in the screen that I can get in and adjust that if necessary. Okay. Now, to be honest, in a lot of cases, the longest part of this process is actually just getting in and drawing this new screen. We'll set that point to be about there. Come down to about here. Now, you're probably thinking that, you know, Kev, we're going to have to go through that whole tracking process again. And, you know, we just did that once. Do we really need to do that again? And to be honest, the short answer to that is actually no. We've already done a lot of the work with that first track. Now, again, the track might have been a fairly simple track, but I really don't want to have to go through and do this again, especially in the situation of a roto. I'd really like to take the, the mass that we've just drawn and attach it to that track that we've already done. So this way, a lot of the, the leg work in doing our actual reshape for the screen will be already done. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing I want to do is over here in the layer controls, I want to call this layer that we just drew screen roto. And I want to call layer one screen track. Just so we can keep track of everything that we're doing, just in case we happen to have multiple layers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off that screen track because I'm done with it and I'm happy with it and I know that it works the way that I need it to. Now I'm going to select my screen roto and I'm going to come down here to the link to track option because you'll notice that if I start to drag through with the way things are now, that roto just sits there. It doesn't actually do anything. And I'm going to have to go through frame by frame or at least jump down every few frames to get this and re-keyframe it the way that I need to. Ah, but I won't need to do that if I link to track and I take my screen roto and I link it to that screen track layer. You'll now see that roto is actually attached to that track and now all I should have to do is jump down to about the halfway point and we can just make a minor adjustment to all of our points just to make sure you'll see that our track was just a little bit off there but this is how we can simplify the entire roto process now I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth in this process when I talk about Keem, because you're really going to see how we break down tracking and roto when we talk about Keem. Now I'm just going to jump down to the end, make sure that we're good here with our last points, and we're going to be ready to send this back to Media Composer. And again, in a lot of cases, you won't even notice that the track is off just because my footage is moving, the track is moving. But this, especially when it comes to the roto, is going to be important. And just the fact that we could do all this in what? You know, three simple steps is just going to make life a million times easier. So now what's important to keep in mind is that the reason that we only want to have the screen track, or pardon me, the screen roto turned on, is that when we quit out of Mocha Pixel Chooser, that's the information that's going to be used for the mask. If I turn that screen track on, we're going to have a lot of different things happening that we don't want to have happening. So only make sure that you have the layer turned on that you want to use as the mask. So at this point, all I'm going to do is quit out of the pixel chooser. I'm going to say save, 
and you'll notice that now everything in the background has disappeared and all I can see is my screen in black and white. So how do we get it to show us what we actually want to have it show us? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come down to the output. Right now it's set to black and white matte and I'm going to change that to alpha channel. Now as soon as I do, you'll notice that I now have the background that I can see perfectly, which is the waterfall, and I can sort of still see the screen slightly transparent. Let's move down in the effects editor all the way down here to the pixel chooser matte option and I'm going to change that channel from luma to be alpha and you'll see that we now have almost what we need we just have it in reverse so all I'm going to do is come back up and I'm going to invert that mask and we now have things exactly the way that we want now something that I should point out is that with the mocha mask that I created it's a very hard edge now I could adjust that inside of mocha if I wanted to or what I could do is simply come to the feather option and I can adjust it here. Now to be honest, I'm only going to adjust it by maybe 0.5 just to give it the slightest of softest of edges. Now if I zoom back, you'll see that this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to step out of effects mode. Now it looks great as far as the actual screen replacement goes, but you'll see that my track isn't actually doing anything. So let's get in and let's fix that. I'm just going to take a look at just the waterfall layers. And I did mention that we needed the BCC corner pin effect. So let's take corner pin. I'm going to take it and drag it and drop it down onto my shot. Once it's on my shot, I now need to tell it to look to that tracking information that I exported for the tracking data that we're going to want to have for this clip. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to just see the actual corner pin itself and not see it over top of itself. So inside the effects editor, I'm going to come to the corner pin render option. I'm going to set that just to be corner pin only. Now what we're going to do is scroll down in the effects editor, down to the tracker data, import export, and I'm going to load the tracking information from the desktop that I had saved out. I'm going to say open. You'll now see that that tracking information puts that screen exactly where it needs to be. I'm just going to step back into effects mode for a second because the last thing I want to do is I just want to turn off that mo the motion tracking information or the motion paths, which is right here, show motion paths. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come back up to the topmost layer and you'll now see that not only do we have our motion track set up perfectly inside a media composer, but we also have that screen roto happening exactly the way that we need it to. So what we now have in the end is a perfect screen removal done quickly and easily inside of your Avid Media Composer timeline. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that a render will be required because you'll see that that corner pin, the BCC corner pin, is a blue dot effect. So no matter how you work it, you will have to render this effect, but it's a fairly quick render and it's going to save you from having to take all of these elements and exporting them to After Effects to do your composite there. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. And again, MC101 is going to be a coupon code you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC11, AVX, or multi-host licenses, full or upgrade, simply using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.